glad you're streaming with us. Well, a startling alarm on climate change now being sounded by a collaboration of scientists. World Weather Attribution just released this report saying human-caused climate change played a huge role in the catastrophic flooding in Libya. That group found human-induced climate change made that heavily rainfall or the heavy rainfall up to 50 times more likely. Chief Meteorologist and Managing Editor of the ABC News Climate Unit, Ginger Z, joining me now. So, Ginger, let's just talk about how the World Weather Attribution Group came to this conclusion and how long did it take? Right, so it was actually a really fast term for an attribution study. 13 scientists from around the world came together and said, okay, let's look at what happened in Libya, in Greece and Turkey too, and say, exactly how would it be different than it would have been without the warming of today. So they basically said, today we're 1.2 degrees Celsius warmer than we were pre-industrial revolution. Then they took the same data and the inputs into the modeling, stripped us of all this warming, went back to the 1800s like the world would have been without the emissions-based warming and said, what would it have done then? That's what gave them the difference in those two is up to 50 times different. Now they were very clear that the rainfall was one thing, the human engineering and lots of other factors played into what ended up happening and how many people died. But when it comes to precipitation, we know that a warmer world certainly has the ability to make extremes more extreme. And we've talked about this and the experts that long said that floods uh, pose a significant danger to two dams meant to protect nearly 90,000 people in the northeast of Libya. We saw exactly what happened here with those dams. Mm -hmm. So were the warnings from scientists ignored? Well, I think scientists, as far as in the atmospheric sciences, would have told you that this event was so well forecast. I mean, look at this. This is called the Omega Block. And so you'll see Libya's down here. That low pressure system was meant to be sitting there for days and days. What was not well done was there were warnings about the engineering. We also, and they pointed to this in the World Weather Attribution Study, uh, that there were, you know, this is an area of conflict, that land use was all part of it. So there were so many variables that played in. The rain was well forecast. It's just that having extremes like that are going to be more extreme. So we're going to have to be better about building in future. So meanwhile, in New York, we've been talking about this this week mm -hmm. as, well, as well, Climate Week, uh, and that means climate change protests. Mm -hmm. uh, those continue, and the demonstrators are now planning to be outside the Bank of America Tower in Bryant Park, saying that the bank is the third largest financier of fossil fuels. Give us some context. Where do we stand you know, compared to the rest of the world when it comes to fossil fuel consumption at this point? Kira, it doesn't matter what I say about climate or weather or really anything at this point. I almost always have people say, well, what about China? And I think it's really important to delineate who is emitting what and who is consuming what. The United States is far by far the largest consumer of fossil fuels. China's actually lower there. They're consuming and, and burning more coal. That's why in this next graphic, you're gonna see China skyrocketed in the last 30 years into their annual CO2 emissions. The US, we've Go, we're going down. You know, we had a really big low when it came to the pandemic, but India is still on the climb, but far, far away from where China is. I think also really important for everyone to know it is not just about what's happening today, but what has happened the last 200 years. And the United States holds not a great trophy to hold, but the legacy load, meaning that we have had more cumulative CO2 emissions by far than even the EU or China. China, again, is on the quick increase. But I should note that a big theme of pretty much any climate conference, but certainly New York City Climate Week, is that these big nations and the developed nations that are not only consuming the most fossil fuel, emitting the most CO2, but they are helping to warm the world that then is creating extremes where underdeveloped or less developed countries are the most vulnerable to climate change. Those countries highlighted on this map. Kira. All right, Ginger Z, our expert indeed. Thank you so much, you. Ginger. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.